Remember those headlines about the supposed breakthrough with Microsoft's quantum computer? It's made so much noise, no one noticed that a much more remarkable quantum computing breakthrough happened at the same time. It came from Amazon. They unveiled a quantum chip that's one of the hottest candidates for getting to commercially relevant quantum computers. Oh yeah. Quantum computers work by the strange rules of quantum physics, which allows them to solve certain problems much faster than conventional computers could. There are many commercially relevant areas where that could make a big impact, from material science to finance and cryptography. The promise is real, and we do have functioning quantum computers already, the trouble is they're small. We usually measure the size of quantum computers by the number of qubits that are the quantum bits, their operational units. The trouble with qubits is that their quantum properties are extremely susceptible to noise. Any tiny wiggle or cosmic ray or your neighbor's cat sneezing throws them off. <laughs> this means one needs a method of error correction. Error correction requires redundancies and that means more qubits. Estimates say we'd need something like a million qubits for commercially relevant quantum computers. Currently, we're at a few hundred. So, four zeros left to go, and at the moment, no one really knows how to scale quantum computers up to a useful size. No one except, it seems, P. Chadbolt, chief scientific officer of the quantum computing firm Psi Quantum, because he recently said in an interview with Reuters that right now they are producing millions of chips for quantum computers. Wait, what? Psi Quantum works with photons as quantum bits, and they've put four Forward a plan for scaling up their platform. But a major challenge for this method is that the photons leak from the chips and one can't calculate with what isn't there. So, well, personally, I'm somewhat surprised that a company would start mass production before having presented a single prototype, but maybe I'm old fashioned. In any case, so no one knows how to scale up quantum computers except for this one guy with his factory, allegedly. The Microsoft announcement, if you remember, was also at the core of it about scaling up. They said they have these topological states which aren't so susceptible to noise, meaning they'd scale much better. However, critics have said that Microsoft's qubits aren't so much topological as they are hypothetical. By the way, a little bird has told me that there will be another Microsoft paper coming up shortly, so we'll almost certainly talk about this again soon. The recent Amazon development now is addressing the same issue as Microsoft, but in a far less speculative way. They use superconducting circuits. That's the currently most pursued avenue to quantum computing, which is also used by Google and IBM. The news is now that Amazon has unveiled their first quantum computing chip named Ocelot. I had to look this up in a dictionary, so let me add that an Ocelot is a type of wild cat. That'll make sense if I tell you that they use what's called cat cube. Bits. Sounds like pet food, I know, but cat qubits are a really smart idea. They're combinations of qubits that suppress a certain type of error called a flip error. The basic idea is that by coupling several qubits together, if one of them accidentally flips, then another one automatically corrects this. Their Ocelot chip combines five of these cat qubits to one computational qubit, which then has a far lower error rate. They say that these cat qubits are scalable architecture for reducing error correction by up to 90%. 90%! You see why I think this is such a big deal? That'd mean we're not four zeros away, but just three. If they can get it to scale, they're suddenly far ahead of everybody else. 
everybody else except for this one guy with his millions of qubits, allegedly. But let me put this into context. This doesn't mean we'll have quantum computers tomorrow. Amazon's cat qubits still need to be cool to some millikelvin and they still need too many of those to put them into one cooling device, which brings the problem of having to connect multiple of these devices. This is why I actually do think that photonic computing or neutral atoms have an advantage just because the qubits are smaller. Personally, I suspect that Amazon is already using quantum computers to optimize their delivery chain, because as of recently, our delivery man has started to just throw the package into the staircase. And once they've sorted out quantum computing, maybe Amazon can make their return policy make sense. Science isn't just interesting, it's also a great inspiration. That's why I'm always looking for new science stories. My go-to place for this is Nautilus magazine. Nautilus has a digital and a print version and it's just a pleasure to read. They really put a lot of effort into writing and the graphic design is amazing. You notice immediately if you open the print version that it's a high quality production. I've written several contributions for Nautilus myself about physics, black holes, quantum gravity, quantum mechanics, and you know, the stuff that I normally write about. But I enjoy this magazine because it tells me what's going on in other areas. What I particularly like about Nautilus is that they cover all areas of science, from astronomy to economics, history, neuroscience to philosophy and physics. They'll pick the most relevant topics and give you all the context. You can join Nautilus as a digital-only member or get a print subscription. In addition to full access to all the stories in Nautilus, members receive benefits like priority access to events, exclusive products, products and product discounts. And of course I have a special offer. If you use my custom link joinnautilus.com slash Sabine, you'll get 15% off your membership subscription. So go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.